Hey, welcome to UK Wildcraft. So I love drinking herbal teas and I think it's even better when you can forage the ingredients for yourself. So most of the teas in this video you can either drink fresh or you can dry them so preserve them throughout the year. And I'd re recommend not using a dehydrator, just getting some racks and letting them air dry naturally and then storing them. It preserves the nutrients a lot better than using a dehydrator. So when you're making the teas, I recommend that you boil the water first and then allow it to cool slightly before you add in the herbs and then infuse them for 15 to 20 minutes. It's better that way because if you boil the ingredients in with the water, the nutrients can be destroyed, especially vitamin C is very easily destroyed by heat. It's also a good idea not to drink the same teas every day and to vary the types you're drinking because if you're drinking the same types of tea every day, you can get a buildup of nutrients and that can be bad for you. And also I should say I'm a forager, I'm not a herbalist or I'm not medically trained. So none of the information in this video is medical advice. And also the, the medical information that I have used in this video, I've used from a few books and I will reference them in the description for this video. All of this growing next to the pond is water mint. It's very common alongside waterways like rivers, streams and ponds and just any sort of damp marshy ground. It tastes very similar to spearmint and uh, you can dry it or use it fresh but it's much better just using it fresh and you can usually pick it from around May. So any mints are usually good for the stomach. So they can aid in indigestion and help stomach pains. Uh, mints are high in vitamins A, C and B6 and they're high in potassium and magnesium. The leaves are oval and roughly serrated. They can often have a bit of a purplish colour to the leaves and they're slightly hairy as well. So like all mints, the leaves grow in opposing pairs that alternate down the stem. So two leaves opposite that way, then two leaves opposite that way, going all the way down the stem. And also like all mints, the stems are square. This is common mallow, Malva sylvestris, which can often be found on roadsides and waste grounds. It's high in vitamins C and E. And you want to collect the leaves and flowers in summer. The leaves can be found all year, but they're best in summertime, although these ones have been pretty well eaten by insects. So the leaves can be used fresh and the flowers can be used fresh or dried. Mallow tea can help with sore throat or dry cough and can also aid indigestion. The leaves are palmately lobed and they have a distinctive five lobe pattern. Those lobes are shallowly toothed and the leaves are slightly hairy as well as the leaf stem petiole is hairy as well. So the flowers have five petals that are a pinky purple colour and they have darker purple veins. And the flowers are stalked.
So most people in the UK are familiar with the bramble or blackberry bush, Rubus fruticosus. It grows on pretty much any patch of waste ground or hedgerow in the UK. The leaves make a nice refreshing tea. It's best to pick them in spring or early summer when they're still a bit of a light green like this. When they get older and darker green they're not as nutritious anymore. They're still fine to use but these ones are better. Obviously when you're picking them just be careful of the thorns. So you just want to pick them and air dry them on a rack until they go brittle and then just store them in a glass jar or a brown paper bag. So bramble leaf tea is generally a good tonic for just general health benefits and it's also supposed to help with diarrhea as well as aiding cold and flu symptoms and sore throats. So where you find brambles there's a good chance you'll also find goosegrass or cleavers. They're very common in hedgerows. It's that plant that you probably used to use to stick to people as a kid. It makes a nice tea and also it makes a nice uh, refreshing water. If you just infuse the leaves in water overnight and just leave it in the fridge the next day it's a very nice cooling drink. Cleavers are traditionally a cleansing herb. They used to cleanse the lymphatic system and also help with swollen glands and bladder irritation. So to identify, the leaves are sessile or they don't have leaf stems, they just join straight onto the main stem themselves. And they grow in whorls around the stem of usually around six to eight leaves per whorl. This is pineapple weed, Matricaria discoidea, and this makes probably my favourite herbal tea. As the name suggests, it tastes just like pineapple. If you crush the flower heads or the leaves, you get a really, really strong smell of pineapple too. The main medical use for this is it's a soporific. It's closely related to chamomile, which is pretty well known for its calming properties. And yeah, a cup of this before bed pretty much guarantee you a good night's sleep. It usually starts flowering around June and you're best off looking for it in compacted soil like walkways and especially in fields where you've got a gate so a lot of people are entering or leaving the field that is a good place to be looking for pineapple weed the leaves are feather like very similar to chamomile and the flowers are like little domes they do kind of look like pineapples and they also look similar to the flowers of daisy although they don't have the white petals that daisies have it's just the, the flower dome so the best parts for making the tea are the the flower heads and just the the top part of the plant the the, the top leaves they have the best flavour. These are linden flowers, or flowers of the lime tree. It 
they usually start flowering in early June and you'll find these trees mostly in parks and occasionally in ancient woodland and it's best to pick these flowers when some of the buds are still unopened that means that they're still nice and fresh so linden tea is actually quite expensive if you buy it from health food shops you can pay 12 13 pounds for like a little packet but all it is is these flowers dried so there's no need to buy it you can just pick your own in the first few weeks of june and dry enough for the whole year and you can see from the amount that grow on every tree that you can easily collect enough for the year So in terms of health, linden flowers help with anxiety, migraines, and can help with insomnia as well. So I like to dry the flowers on racks, uh, do it inside and out of direct sunlight because direct sunlight can deteriorate the flowers quite quickly. And once they're dried, I recommend just to keep them in a brown paper bag. So linden flowers are a yellowy green. They each have five petals and five sepals. And they also have a wing, and that is to aid the distribution of the seed by wind. The leaves are roughly heart-shaped. They're serrated, and they come to a point at the end. And they're asymmetrical, so one half of the heart will be a bit bigger than the other. You can use the flowers or leaves of clover for making tea, though the flowers are better. And you can use white clover here, Trifolium repens, or red clover, Trifolium pretens. So the flowers will start appearing from early summer and you'll find them in pretty much any grassland in the UK and most probably in your garden as well. They can be used dried or fresh and they're traditionally used as a, a blood cleanser and also for helping skin conditions such as acne, eczema and psoriasis. And also they're used for soothing coughs. You can ID it by, it usually has three leaves and on those leaves you get little white chevrons so like little white arrows thanks for watching uk wildcrafts if you haven't already you can subscribe here